Man, I remember in the original, I thought you put the skull in the hole and it opened up a slider, like a hide key. There was like a rock or something. There was something that was embedded in the door and in the and it slid to the right and then you took the key out. But maybe I'm misremembering. I mean, it was fucking 1987 for fuck's sakes. Uh, anyway, we're gonna fucking do the key thing and we're gonna move on. Um, hammer, shield, helmet. So, I remember in the original, every action you took, it said, it's getting hot in the room, and it's getting hotter, you do another action, it's getting super hot now, and it's by, like the fourth time you make an action in this room, this dragon roasts the fuck out of you and it's game over. So, I'm going to take the shield, put the shield in the sh satchel, click continue, the dragon notices you and it moves its ponderous weight and begins gathering breath. Okay. I'm gonna hit F2. I'm gonna take this helmet. You put the helmet into your satchel. I can't wait to try out Shadow Gate. All right, everybody. This is Proto Dead, and I'm coming back at ya with another Let's Try Out video. Today we're going to be checking out Shadowgate. So this is the remaster, remake, uh, reimagining, rebuild, I don't know, available on Steam. Came out maybe a year or two years ago. And originally this game came out on the Nintendo, the NES, back in 1987. Oh shit, I'm going to have to turn down the fucking music. The sound effects. Jesus Christ. Let's do this here. That's fucking loud. Oh my god. Okay, that's a little better. I had to, had to change the sound settings. Um, but this game originally came out in 1987, and believe it or not, I played this motherfucker. I remember playing this game um, when I was just a wee lad on the Nintendo, and I remember not being able to get past the dragon. And also falling down, like once my torch burned out, I fell down and broke my leg and died. And it's like, as far as I could ever get. For players new to first-person adventures, does not require a deep knowledge of the Shadowgate universe. I didn't know there was a universe, but we're definitely going to go normal. Because I would like to uh, not fall down without a torch and break my leg. A hero's journey. A great quest. Hmm. Certainly it shall be these things. But for you, young Jair Kathaka, soldier of Windermere, could it not be so much more? In dreams, I have come to you, beseeching, entreating. Ride south, boy. Take naught but a dirk, a torch, courage. Ride south from Rivelin, around the southern arm, through the Waven Fairwood, past Myrithsath, beyond the citadel of Murlac Tor, and the spires of Gimdane, and the darkness of Tarketh's Pass. Man, they're trying too hard with all these made-up names, man. There you shall find my stone in wait. Under the shade of the mountain range, none have entered. Either on foot, on mount, on wing. Gatekeeper, the oldest of spires. It harbors that which has been spoken of in whispers and ascribed to legend. Shadowgate, the living castle. is not as it should be. One of our own is now our great bane. A blight upon us. He has brought the ancient keep low, and it now lies fallow. It is there that you will find me, Lackmere of the Circle of Twelve. It is there that you will find this great quest. It is there that you will find yourself.
Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, maybe all that shit was on the back of the Nintendo box, but it certainly wasn't front loaded with the uh, with voice dubbed voice dubs. Um, welcome to the tutorial. Gameplay tips will appear at appropriate times to teach you the mechanics of the game. You can turn these tips on or off, or change the command system at any time in the settings tab of the options menu. Click the X button to close a gameplay tip, and then we can check mark the box to hide all tips in case we're a pro, but I'm not gonna do that. So this is... Mm, this is a point-and-click sort of adventure, so it's not like we move around the world like, uh we see nowadays like in action games this is like it what you see on the screen is a canvas it's a painting and we can kind of interact with a few images so the command system click on any object in the game and the command icons will appear in a circle around that object click on a command icon and use that command on the selected object for example to take that skull on the ground first click the skull and then on the take icon which looks like a hand I think you can also smack the keyboard. You can hit T for take. Just You can hit E for eat and stuff like that. Um, that you will find yourself with Lackmere's words echoing about your head. You stumble a bit until the world ceases. It's lurching. You stand before the Gatekeeper Mountain. An ornate door framed by a series of skulls is fashioned into the rock itself. Into the rock wall. Excuse me. Oh, okay. So here's here's the uh, the skull. I hit the take button, so I took the skull. You nearly dropped the skull when it begins to speak. About time, boy! You have no idea how long I've been here. You can call me Yorick. That's familiar. It's from Shakespeare or something, right? I have no recollection of how I got here, but I do know plenty about the castle. If you need help on this quest of yours. Just speak to me and I will give you a hint. Okay. So now I'm going to take this key. So now I've got a key in my inventory. Objects you take will be stored in your inventory. Click on the satchel in the lower left corner of your screen to open the inventory. You can use commands on objects in the inventory. Uh, Jesus, the use command. To use one object or another, first select the object you would like to use, and then the use or the wrench icon. Then click on what you would like to use that object on. For example, to use the key to unlock the door, first select the key, and then the use icon, and then click on the door. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's what I need to do now. Notice down here I've got a torch, and I don't know what this icon really represents. Maybe my health, I doubt it. I don't think you have health in this game. Um, but we'll click on the satchel here. Objects in your inventory are stored in a different section. Spells and spells icon objects can be equipped are in the outfit section, books and scrolls stored in the archives section. Everything else is kept in the items section. Click on the tabs at the top of your inventory to switch between the sections. <laughs> oh man, I got a Dirk. Dirka Dirka. I'm going to take a look. The rusted and pitted Dirk looks as if it's seen better days. Well, in this icon, it doesn't look very rusted. It looks pretty fucking fresh. Okay, so we're going to look at the key. This metal key has several strange edgings on its shaft. Just like something else. Use the key on what? Well, I'm going to close out of this, and then I'm going to click this helmet down here. What you expected hasn't happened. The key did not do anything to the root. Thick roots twist through the dense foliage. Yeah, but that looks like... Maybe that's just a stone, but it looks like a fucking helmet. Okay, I'm going to look at this skull. The lower thrum of power comes from this strange skull. Okay, so each one of these skulls is a different thing. I'm going to look at the door. Iron bands bind the rough-hewn door planks that compromise this door. The door is locked. So, you can click on anything in the, in the world. Hmm... An ornate stone archway, replete with carved skulls, frames, and ominous entrance set into the side of the mountain. And it's and every description is very uh, poetic, right? Um, it, that Since there isn't a whole lot going on with this game, it's got to tell a lot of the story and a lot of the flavor is, is produced to you in text. It's delivered to you via text. So that's the way this game is, is worked up. And a lot of games like this was the very same way. So... I, I thought there was you put a skull in here 
A circular indent into the archway suggests something belongs in this slot. What is the fist? Hit Yorick? Speak to Yorick. Man, I remember in the original, I thought you put the skull in the hole and it opened up a slider like a hide -a key there was like a rock or something there was something that was embedded in the door and in the and it slid to the right and then you took the key out but maybe i'm misremembering i mean it was fucking 1987 for fuck's sakes uh anyway we're gonna fucking do the key thing and we're gonna move on story time is motherfucking over Open, close command. You can open and close objects like unlock doors by selecting the object and then the open and close icon. Okay, so instead I'm going to click on this and I'm going to hit O for open on the keyboard. The go command. You can click and use the go commands or double click to go through open doorways, down hallways, and up ladders and flights of stairs. In some cases you can also use the go command to move to a spot of interest within the room. <laughs> Yeah, so very much a point and click, sort of like if you've ever played the game Mist, the original Mist, um, then you'll know it's like this is a freeze frame. I'm, we're standing in this spot here on the ground. We'll move into the doorway, and there may or may not be an animation that transitions into the next room, but the very next screen will be us in that entryway or us in that next room. So we're going to choose the foot to go to the doorway. So here we are in the room. Blackmere was a fool to send a child to do that which even the vaunted Circle of Twelve could not. Contain my growing power. Come if you wish. It makes little difference. Seal your fate within this living castle of the dead. Use in stationary objects. Do you see the lever on the right? Because it is stationary, non-takeable object. Use command behaves differently. Simply select the lever and then select the use icon. This is the same as using thine self on an object. Okay, cool. But I wonder, should I take these torches? An oil-soaked rag wrapped around the end of this torch. Okay, so my torch has gotten smaller, I think. So you only have a limited amount of time to dilly-dally in the game before your torch runs out, and then you can't see. And I don't think the game explicitly tells you that unless we click on a torch. Flames dance about in a strangely hypnotic fashion. Fashion. Um... I'm gonna use my torch on that torch, and I lit the torch! The torch ignites, bursting into flames. I want to take that torch. You drop the torch in your satchel. So I lit this torch on fire because I'm silly. And I took that torch as a backup. Um, this is the back button. I think this is the back button and that will push us into the next room. Which is outside and not a room at all. But I can click here and click G for go on the keyboard and it moves me forward back into the room. Cold mist swirls about my feet, casting a surreal pal over this stone-arched antechamber. Okay, so I'm gonna look at this pile of shit. Okay. I'm gonna look at these stairs. I'm gonna look at this door. A strange pattern, unlike anything you have seen before, is carved into the solid iron door. The door is locked. So what's this blue stuff? The runes on the archway glow with a mystical energy. You feel more... You feel, more than here, a low thrum of power. Okay, so I'm going to use this. Oh, and here's the key. Okay, so the key appeared in the wall. Maybe this is what I was remembering from 1987. I'm going to look at the key. This is a heavy key spotted with flecks of rust. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that, and then I'm going to use this lever again. You pull the lever, but it's stuck in place. Yeah, like your mom. And then, uh, I already looked at the door. I need to use the key on the door. Use the key on what? You struggle with both hands to turn the key into the stubborn lock. A satisfying click echoes through the chamber as you toss the key aside. A strange pattern, unlike anything you have seen before, is carved in the solid iron door. Oh. I'm reading something that happened before. G many Christmas. Okay, so can I take this? 
You take the lit torch before tossing the previous one aside. Well, that was silly of me. It's not what I was looking for. Um, I open the door. The door easily swings open. And the lower left, next to the satchel, is the map. The map keeps track of everywhere you've been. As well as any interesting things you might have seen, click on the map to open it. The back arrow on the lower right uh, next to your torch is the back arrow. Select the back arrow to go in the room that is behind the current room in the map. Okay. So I think we've done all that we can here. Um, we can ask Yorick what's up. As you begin speaking to Yorick, he interrupts. You better be sure that you want my advice before you speak to me again. Because I'll be giving hints next. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. So we're going to go into this room. Saving and loading a game. You can save and load games at any time, and that's important since Shadowgate is a dangerous place. Click on the gear symbol in the upper right corner to open the save and load menus. There are also keybinds for doing quick saves and quick loads. Q. Learning spells. You can learn spells from certain books and scrolls. First, open the book or scroll and then look at it to read it. Every spell does something different and will only work when cast on certain items or in certain places. You can cast a spell by selecting it from the spell tab in your inventory, clicking on the use icon and then the object in the room. Okay, so like we do a uh, key. Geomany Christmas. This is too much already, I think. I'm going to take a look at this book. An old musty smell emanates from this book, hence at its age. Candle. Amazingly, the flame does not consume the wick on this candle. Okay. How about this dead person? Giving the skeleton a quick once over, you find no obvious cause of death. You do, however, have a bad feeling about this. Okay. These people watch Star Wars, I guess. This rolled up parchment is secured with a dab of candle wax. I'm going to just take that torch, and I'm going to take that torch. Because, like I said, I remember running out of light with my torch, and then as soon as you ran out of light, the next room you entered, it said you fell down and broke your leg and you were dead. So what's this? Strange markings and glyphs line the stone pillar that enshrouds, enshrouds this statue. One that depicts a hooded figure with a darkened visage. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool, all right. So I'm going to open the book. Something shifts on your feet as you open the book. That's not good. Okay. And now I'm going to look at the book again. You scan the ancient manuscript, noticing most of the language is unintelligible. However, one particular word stands out from the rest in Vokan. In your mind's eye, you see a glyph glowing with a power and quickly write down the strange marking in your spell book you have learned to spell. Okay, but I wonder what does it do, homie G? Um, can I open that scroll? You carefully open the scroll. I want to look at the scroll. You read the message scrawled on the scroll. Fendril, this missive is of utmost importance. We must coordinate our efforts. Seek my obelisk in the alkalite den below the sewers. I feel the worst is upon us, but I have plans in motion that may yet avert disaster. It is signed with the name Lakmir. Hey, he sounds familiar. Should I take it? Close the book. A small cloud of dust arises as you close the book. I'm going to look at the ground beneath the feet, um, where the I presume the floor shifted. A damp, musty breeze wafts out from behind an altar set within the stone, a clove. You note that the long hallway continues further into the mountain. Okay. I'm going to look over here against this wall. Yeah, I just, I just read that. Okay. Um, geez, so... Spells. Invocon. I'm going to look at Invocon. The translation of this spell glyphed Invocon. Your mind glimpses some spectral person at the edge of your consciousness. I wish I knew what it did. I mean, I closed it. I opened it. Um, 
criminy. I'm gonna use use this spell on what this dead dude. You visualize the glyph in your mind. You focus your will. When the pressure builds to an uncomfortable level, you release the spell with a word. The the power dissipates as quickly as it appeared. Okay. So I'm gonna use this spell again, maybe on this hooded figure. You concentrate the statue. Whisper power bounces uselessly against uselessly against the cold dead stone. Okay, well, I don't know what the power is supposed to do, so... Um, this is another room. Is this another room over here? Dead stone. So, I'm thinking that I can't go behind here. Um, I'm going to look over this way. The passage continues deeper into the mountain. I will definitely go deeper into the mountain for right now. Uh, you can search and loot various objects in the game by selecting the object and then selecting either open or use. The contents of the object will be automatically added to the appropriate tab in your inventory. Searchable objects include corpses, desks, bag, chest, etc. Show all objects. If you want to see which objects in a room are interactable, use the show objects keybind F2 by default and the objects will pulse. Hit the key bind again to return them to normal. Okay, so F2. I'm gonna hit F2 and let's see what that does. I'm gonna back up one and I'm gonna hit F2. Ooh, look at that. So this guy's interactable too. Fissures and fractures run along the edges of this section of stone wall. Um, yeah, I didn't notice this at all before. Um, it was very well hidden. So, what if we uh, see if we can open it? You put your shoulder against the stone and push. The rock fractures and crumbles inward, revealing an opening. Um, I'm going to look at the opening. A musty smell accompanied by rustling S emanates from the hole in the rock wall. I'm going to go in. You force yourself through the narrow opening into the darkness beyond. Click continue. Cold air rushes down into this chamber, no doubt from an opening in the rock wall above. Okay. So, there's some bones up in here. There's some bones in this house. Um, I just hit the F2 button and it looks like you can take some of these bones in a spear maybe. And then go through this way. And you can go through this way, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to hit F2 again. I'm going to take a look at this bone. This particular bone looks fresher than the others. How about this skull? This skull is a bit smaller than the ones you have seen before. How about this spear? This fletching on the arrow looks a bit tattered, but its silver arrow tip looks to be in good condition. I will take it. I will also take this skull. You contemplate taking the skull, and after a moment you relent, having decided it won't be useful on your quest. Okay, I will take the bone, though. You look at the useless bone for the moment, and you decide not to take it. So how about this bone? Can I take it? Contemplate taking the bone? No. Okay. Yorick shouts out a warning. Hey, boy, did you see some movement in the shadows? No, I didn't see any movement in the shadows. Blackmere is the one who brought you here. You should seek him out. Look for an obelisk. Okay, no problem. So I'm going to look over here. Roughly carved patches, passage leads downwards. And I'm going to look up here. You sense furtive movement within the darkness of the opening. Something or someone is definitely up there. Okay, well, I don't want to get eaten, but maybe I should go back and I'll come back to this room when I feel a little bit more comfortable. what that one okay so back to this room I'm going to look at this bag it's a hand stitched sack made from the height of an animal which animal however is uncertain um, I'm gonna open it up you rummage through the sack and find a scroll you put this in your satchel while discarding discarding the sack <laughs> archive archive we're gonna open it up 
While the writing is difficult to discern, you manage to glean a few key phrases. The danger is real. Alert the surrounding lands. Seal off the passages into the Gatekeeper Mountains. The wax seal shows an eagle in flight, and it is signed by someone named Fandril. Like this guy's name. Okay. So, I'm going to look at this ribcage over here. This cluster of bones is still mostly intact. Dried sinews and muscles still hold it together. Take a look at the skull. The skull is deep gouged in the back of its head, a telltale sign of a death blow from an axe. Okay, I'm going to hit the F2 button again. Is there anything else that I'm missing? I want to look at this wall, see what it's got to say. A series of ancient doors encircle this small hallway. So, if, if I remember right, this door to the right leads to the dragon. The surface of this metal door is pitted with the age-old rust. Okay, with a grunt, you push the door open. You can smell heavy, damp air from within the doorway. I mean, maybe it was in the next few rooms ahead. In certain difficulty modes, only commands pertinent to the selected object will appear on the wheel. However, commands that do not appear on the wheel can still be performed using the keybinds. You can view any set of keybinds in the option menu. You can also hide the UI elements by using the hide UI element keybind, bringing each element up only when acquired if moused over. Okay. So I'm going to look at this dude over here. It's hard to tell from a distance, but you think you see a skeleton chained to a rock. Perhaps you need to get closer to look. Um, somehow. Uh, I'm going to take a look at this waterfall. Small waterfall empties out into the lake. I remember there was rocks. There was rocks on the ground. You sense something large and ominous deep below the surface of these black waters. You find yourself in a large damp cavern. Curving set of stairs lead up into the darkened passage. Yeah, I distinctly remember this section having collectible rocks on the ground. But then again, it could be different, you know, now that uh, now that it's been reimagined and redone and all that. We'll go up these stairs. Whoa, a magnificent waterfall cascades from the mouth of the ancient stone statue painstakingly carved in the carved cavern wall. Below it, an undulating mass of water hovers playfully above the river. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm gonna look at this. Like, this is magic. Hovering before you is an entity made entirely of water and mist. The liquid elemental continuously forms and reforms in a hypnotic way. You've heard of a magical... You've heard of a magical orb that can capture creatures like this. This marking looks like a Dwarven Craftsman stamp. Tall waterfall cascades down from the mouth of the statue carved into the cavern wall. You, see, you can see the outline of a cave opening behind it. Okay, so I'm going to hit the F2 button. What else is interactable up in this motherfucker? I'm not seeing anything. Having cut a deep furrow into the rock of this cavern, an underground river p rushes past you into a large crevasse. Okay, well, I'm going to back up because it doesn't look like I go forward anymore. It was loud in that room. And I'm just going to back up one more time. Okay, so I'm going to open up this door. This solid wooden door is banded in iron. Okay. With a grunt, you push the door open. A chill, fell air blows from this doorway. So I'm going to go into it. Oh, man. Double tap a key command bind to lock it. You can then perform that command multiple times without reselecting it. Right click anywhere to deselect a command or object. You can also double click on objects to look at them. On unlock doors to open them. And on open or entryways to go through them. Okay, so it's fucking cold up in here. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna look at this. A strange entity made entirely of solid ice and cold vapor hovers about the room in front of you. You heard of a magical orb that can capture creatures like this. Now, I don't remember this being in the original. This could be a new thing. So I'm gonna hit F2 and see what else is interactable. Um, torch, I'm gonna take that torch. And I'm going to take a look at this rock mass. A long white object is frozen 
inside this piece of ice. Okay, so I need... Wait a minute. What does my spells do again? Spells. I'm going to use this spell on that ice. Visualize the glyph in your mind. You focus your will. The pressure builds. You release the spell with a word, and the power dissipates quickly. Okay, so that ain't it. Um, okay, so what if I put a torch back? I got five torches. I'm going to use the shit out of this one, and I'm going to put it back. Nothing happened when you use a torch on the cellar. Well, maybe I should have left it in place and just lit it on fire. This frost-covered door sits firmly within its stone frame. You put your shoulder into the door and shove it open. I'm going to go forward. Here's the dragon. Equipping objects. Notice the shield on the ground. This is an object you can equip. Equip all items by s equip the items by selecting them and then selecting the equip shield icon. Equipped objects can be seen on thyself portrait and the icon in the upper right hand of the screen. As well as in your inventory, you can unequip objects by the following the same procedure. The smell of brimstone rises from within the chamber as a pair of glowing eyes watch your every move from the opening in the far wall. So there's a lot of gold in this room. Um, hammer, shield, helmet. So I remember in the original, every action you took, it said it's getting hot in the room and it's getting hotter. You do another action, it's getting super hot now. And it's like, like the fourth time you make an action in this room. This dragon roasts the fuck out of you, and it's game over. So, I'm going to take the shield, put the shield in the sh satchel, click continue. The dragon notices you, and it moves its ponderous weight and begins gathering breath. Okay. I'm going to hit F2. I'm going to take this helmet. You put the helmet into your satchel. Click continue. Oh! Shifts its weight and gathers breath with a roar. The ancient beast releases a scorching stream of fire at you. Quicker than you thought possible, the flame engulfs you. Your scream in excruciating pain as your flesh is seared from your bones. Oh, well. It looks like I made the wrong move. I guess I should have equipped the shield immediately, huh? You have chosen poorly, young dear. <laughs> Even though I had experience on my side, I didn't, uh, I didn't make the right choice. Mm. So it can be over that quickly. Well, geez, so yeah, this is, uh, this is Shadowgate, uh, available on Steam. Pretty neat going back and taking another look at it after, uh, 30 years or so of, uh, since I've played the original. Uh, very interesting. I think I think I'd be interested in actually doing a few more of these, like going back and revisiting some old as fuck games. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, tell me what you think about this game. If you played the original on the NES, tell me what you think about that. Um, this this uh, is. I appreciate you sticking with me this long. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for future content. Uh, leave me some feedback down below. But now is the this is the portion of the video where I like to read the words of the developer and go back and see if we can compare what the developer says about this game Shadowgate on their advertising platform and see if we agree with their words or are they full of shit and they're trying to uh, scam us. As you guys know, a Let's Try Out video is a part Let's Play. There's going to be some commentary in here, a part tutorial you learn as I learn as I play the game, and part first impressions, because a lot of these games I've never played before. And uh, you get to go through, step through all the problems that I step through, and then hopefully we come out the other side learning a little bit. And kind of a part review, because I try to rehash a little bit of my opinions at the end of the piece. After we read the words of the developer, we can try to make a decision whether they're shoveling us a load of bullshit or if they're spot on honest and it seems to make a lot of sense with what they're trying to, uh, the product that they're trying to produce. And if you want to spend your hard earned money on it, because at the end of the day, I'm trying to give you an honest presentation of the first 30 minutes or so of a video game really is. That way we can make a sound judgment on it. So let's read the words of the developer. <clears throat> Shadowgate thrust into the role of the Seed of Prophecy. Players travel deep into the living castle in hopes of defeating the evil that dwells within, the dreaded Warlock Lord. 
So far on Steam, all the reviews are very positive, almost 400 reviews, which isn't very much. This isn't a very popular game, apparently. Um, this was uh, released in 2014. I know earlier in the video I said a few years ago, but hey, <laughs> what's a few years among friends, right? I'm fucking 40 years old, let's go. Um, this is developed by Zoji. Zogio, Zogi. They've done a few Mac Venture series and uh, Sherlock Holmes games before this. They're kind of all point and click adventure games. Currently, right now, Shadowgate is sitting at $15. You can buy the special edition for $25. I really don't know what you get with that. Um, totally not worth it. If you if you're a big fan of point and click adventure games like this, that uh, you know is. It's a lot of its detail and allure is is in the words in the descriptions of stuff and stuff like that And it's like a little puzzle game that you want to figure out if you like stuff like that This may be up your alley. Hey pay the full price or whatever um, Support the developers so they continue to make games like that, but if not check it out on Steam sale uh, Don't buy the special edition. It's probably not for you um, And if you absolutely hate games like this then let me know in the comments down below and don't buy the game This is a single player only game Shadowgate is one of the most well-known and beloved point-and-click adventure titles in gaming history. As one of the original NES titles in the popular Mac, Mac Venture series that went on to be celebrated on the NES, GBC, and Nintendo 64, Shadowgate quickly endeared players with its fantastic atmospheric soundtrack, perilous locations to progress through, countless puzzles to solve, and more ways to gruesomely die than gamers previously thought possible. Thrust into the role of the Seed of Prophecy, players travel deep into the Living Castle in hopes of defeating the evil that dwells within, the dreaded Warlock Lord. Now, nearly 30 years after the original version haunted Mac and NES gamers, the original development team behind that timeless classic is back with a full reimagining of the original Shadowgate. Much more than a port, the team at Zojo EI <laughs> Zojo has painstakingly redesigned the game from the ground up, adding tons of new mind-bending puzzles, lots of new rooms with stunning hand-painted 2D graphical detail and more objects to interact with and help you along your quest. Decide how you want to play this new reimagined Shadowgate. Want the modern adventure experience? Use the wheel-based icon command system. Want retro experience? Employ the classic command system and turn on the retro graphics soundtrack, text box, and room transitions. Want a more cinematic experience? Switch to immersive mode by auto-hiding the UI and customizable hotkeys to explore the castle. Or mix and match the options to satisfy your play style in Shadowgate. There are plenty of new features and fun throwbacks to the original version to, satis the original version to satisfy veteran adventurers and newcomers alike. Command UI. Some of the key features. Customize UI. Play the way you want. Use the modern wheel-based icon commands, classic on-screen on commands, or jump into the immersive mode and auto-hide the UI elements and create new keybinds and log key command keys and more. The Dreaded Pumpkin Quest. A new mini-quest. Find and free the Dread Pumpkin. First-person adventuring. Utilize your inventory, mapping system, and intuitive UI to complete your quest. Dangerous Dungeons. Tons of beautifully illustrated rooms featuring both new and familiar locations offering new gameplay experiences. Mind-bending puzzles. Lots of new and updated puzzles that seamlessly expand on the original game. Difficulty Levels. Four different difficulty levels from novice to expert that actually change the gameplay experience and the puzzle structure. For the ultimate challenge, try Iron Man mode, which disables saves and requires players to finish the game in one try. Retro mode. Play the game like it's 1989. Toggle on pixelated graphics. Listen to Hiroyuki Masono's original NES chiptunes. And move between rooms with the NES transitions and then use and enjoy the text in retro format. Storytelling. The Shadowgate features dramatic cutscenes and all the same great storytelling you can expect from the original creators. 
cinematic score, a digitally orchestrated dynamic soundtrack that changes with the gameplay by composer Rich Douglas. Soundscapes, a complete atmospheric and puzzle-based sound design featuring hundreds of sound effects. Um, so yeah, this game is definitely uh, it, it, def- it definitely knocks it out of the park as far as being what they claim it to be, I feel. Um, based on my experience from you know 40 years ago or so 30 year, 30 years ago um i i totally agree they're not selling us a load of crap you're really into shadowgate this is totally something you need to check out so appreciate you watching the video leave me a comment down below tell me what you think about the game tell me what you think about my presentation here today give me some feedback share my video it's free for you it means the world to me helps me grow the channel and uh, and continue to uh be inspired to make videos like this and I appreciate you sticking around. I've been Proto Dead, and I'll catch you on the flip flop. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. And since you're here, why don't you go ahead and leave a like on the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Sound off in the comments below about any other opinions that you might have. I appreciate you stopping by. Subscribe for future content. Share my video with a friend if you can. It helps me out a whole lot. This is Proto Dead saying I'll see you in the future.